Hey, and welcome back to another Sneak Live session. I'm one of your hosts, Brian Clark. And uh, if you were just watching maybe some of the previous streams, we hope you're still here hanging out with us. And it's good to see you again. If you're just joining us now, thank you for joining us wherever you are in the world. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We have another fun session for you right here, right now. And I'm going to be bringing on another host, Laron Paul. Hey, Laron, how's it going, man? Hey, how's it going? I'm good, thank you. Okay, can I do the introductions? Do it. Hey everyone, welcome. And we are restarting this because I want to do the introduction this time. You are going to welcome the amazing, the master producer, the live JavaScript streamer, Brian Clark. There we go. There we go. Here he is. How do you feel about that? How do you like my intros? <laughs> you, uh, I like it a lot and you threw me for a loop there. Let me introduce the next person who's a amazing, talented Java developer, not just a developer, but a champion. He is Brian Vermeer. Come on, there we go. It's, I think it's I a little think. bit too much. Have two, have to have two Brian's on the thing. Let's let's let let me fix that. So fixed. No, I can't. No, I'm kidding, man. Sorry, <laughs> had to do this. Well, let me let me move to the background, and I will leave it up to you because you're far more. I think I'm just I'm just that way to this uh, this thing. I, I I feel I feel you already. So uh, good luck, um, and uh, I will be following you. Cheers. All right. So what are we gonna be doing today, Laurent? <laughs> I want to hack a, um, an app. What is OWASP? I didn't, you know, that sounds like a really uh, fun name. You know, like, no, I got plenty of wasps right outside of my my house here that, you know, <laughs> like, are we just going to get like a fly swatter and try and whack them? That's, uh, you know, like, come on, man. I need to learn. Did you know it's like going all the way back to like uh, 2020? Oh, no, no, no. I, I, my bad. My bad. This no, is, God, second. please, no. 2000. My bad. Oh, <laughs> it's like two decades back. There we go. Is that because of like the whole dot com boom and the web kind of really hitting its stride then? Or yeah, I think the web, I think open source, uh, kind of like the end of uh, 1999, the whole, uh, you know, open source versus, uh, you know, corporates and stuff like that going under. Uh, so yeah, I think 2001 is or 2003. When we got mm -hmm. like the first uh, OWASP uh, top 10 kind of like uh, awareness document. So essentially OWASP is this foundation. It's basically volunteers around the world. The idea is they are helping promote all of those things around application security. So say all of those things, there's like a lot, right? You have tooling. So people, OWASP members, like you know, people of the OWASP community are building uh, tools that help you do uh, sanitization in the right way, help you do things like uh, output escaping, uh, different sort of things, right? And they do it for like JavaScript and Java and like, different SDKs. And they do more of it. They do things like building tools that help you uh, learn about like educational tools, right? Like what we'll touch on today that are like deliberately vulnerable so we can see how not to write uh, insecure code and also like how to fix it if, if we end up saying that. And we'll touch today about one of those projects which essentially looks at the OWASP top 10 and tries to basically put vulnerabilities around each item of the OWASP top 10. Uh, some of them you'll see them and I think you'll say, oh, of course I don't write that code, uh, but we'll, we'll see how other people are actually doing the same thing for some of the examples, which for you it's obvious. It was like an open source project with like, I don't know, millions of downloads that was vulnerable to something that, you know, you had said obvious. Like it's not obvious to everyone. Looking forward to this. I mean, I, I think the, the reason developers don't know much about OWASP or, I mean, today I think it's a lot better. Like I, I know developers, know like OS top 10 much more than before mm -hmm. uh, but like the reasoning that uh, initially this like didn't really speak to developers is because OWASP was basically kind of like security for security people because the whole notion of developer security that you know we're talking about today from like the sneak kind of perspective and stuff didn't really exist this was you know the early 2000s we're talking about you know security people to security people uh, and that's kind of like where all of this tooling everything all the tradition security kind of uh, practitioner uh, that's kind of like where it started right so uh, i'm happy that we're now like making those strides in terms of um, talking about developer security and developers do today know much more about like you know all stuff then injection attacks like success and all those things so i learned on the job about application security more so than i did in any of my studies that i did prior to that so that's where like i think my mindset is like i think it's still important to talk about and raise awareness of the importance of security in general. What are your thoughts on this? Do you feel all developers know security is important right off the bat, or there's still a need to introduce them to the topic? Yeah, I think we are becoming aware of it. I think the world is genuinely becoming more aware of like security, uh, information security, privacy concerns because of like, you know, 
GDPR, you read headlines, you see like a cybersecurity attack has like, you know, ransomware uh, related stuff to it. The oil rig in, you know, California or whatever was like, you know, hijacked and stuff like that. So, like, I think the mindset, the news is is there. Yeah. Um, for developer, I, I like you, like I did not, I think most people don't get like out of uh, formal education, like college or university, going out of it, uh, like uh, graduating and, uh, and like knowing security, they they don't. They think they don't even touch about the topic. There was um, there was a DefCon um, two three years ago. There was a DefCon talk a few years ago where someone put on a slide and said, "Hey, here's like the top uh, the top schools uh, for uh, you know uh, computer science uh, in the U.S. Like you know, I don't know Harvard and MIT and all of them, whatever. And like none of them had and like said." All right, I'm going to filter them for all of those that actually require you to go through like application security uh, training. And then like mm -hmm. the next slide is like none of them, right? Like zero. That's kind of yeah. like giving you the message that like, yeah, it's it may be like an extra course or you maybe catch it up on like your own and stuff like that. But it's not a mandatory thing. The developers are definitely like don't study it. I think they are to an extent aware of it. How much and how, you know, little. I think that's kind of that probably depends. Yeah. Okay. Cool. It was good to hear your your input on this because I think it's it's an interesting topic to see where things are trending and maybe at some yeah. point we'll get to a point where like for sure ninety eight percent of new developers and and just in the whole because there's what there's like billion de millions of developers around the world something like that everywhere. billions yeah billions yeah there's yeah. also billions there's some on Mars and I know there's like <laughs> some other planets where we're trying to reach yeah. out and right it's and so what percentage of those are where of the security implications to their code so anyway but it's great to see OWASP is a, is a great resource for us to yep. learn more about that as you're already aware of security is important and you want to learn more about that OWASP is a great resource for that so let's get back into uh learning more about that I see there's Josh here uh, who's an active member there's like slack and whatever uh there are some projects and you see there's like uh there we go uh, top 10 projects, dependency track is like the uh, NPM audit and sneak uh, kind of uh, tooling. There's a bunch here that's like really cool to go through. Um, mm, juice shop. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Do you know that one? Yeah, I'm familiar with it, but it's always cool. interesting that the name, I like the name of it. This is Node Goat. So Goat projects are basically the, the naming here. I, I think I was asking that in some, some place and uh, it was actually hard to, go, to get back to like the origins of this, but essentially it's a vulnerable application so like you could blame someone to so have like a scapegoat so ah. you see a lot of like goat projects like serverless goat like kubernetes goat all of those are like educational uh projects built uh like i said deliver deliberately vulnerable to help you learn um you know all of those security aspects well you know much of the younger generations Laurent, nowadays they refer to goat as greatest of all time so when, I know when they see this, they might be thinking, this is the greatest of all time Node app. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's okay. actually the worst. <laughs> yeah, let me, let me show you the code and you judge by... Uh... <laughs> we'll get to it in a second. Uh, I will get to it in a second. I don't know if we can call it... Uh... All right, we got to get a couple questions out of the way right away. So you're using VS Code, right? Yes, I am. Why, what why what theme have... and what font are you using? <laughs> Seriously, this is like the first question we're getting. No, but I'm, I'm getting it. it out of the way because you, I know oh, it's on okay, somebody's okay. mind right now. True, true. Yeah. Um, for you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose a different one just because. Uh, how do you want to go to the abyss? Because we're like, yeah, sitting into like security issues. We're gonna go. Okay. Uh, where is that? Oh no, 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 yeah. no my eye. Red to red. Red. Oh, evil. Because like evil stuff. Red feming. No, we're not gonna do this. No, Let's do something else. Okay, but seriously, I'm using like how we're out like we're synthwave. Nice. Synthwave. Yeah, beautiful. There's a uh, yeah. There's um, um, Ahmed has this. Uh, do I have the purple one? It's like uh, I don't have that installed, uh, but he does have the. Uh, come on, uh, the purple uh, uh, VS Code extension, which is pretty cool as well. Uh, but I like the the synthwave stuff, and I had to disable. If you use this, remember remember to disable. Um, it actually has a, uh, a you know this one right? Like it actually makes the the, the font neon. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, but it's like it's it's crushing all that. <laughs> not doing that <laughs> yeah. one. Uh, okay, cool. Let's go back here though. Uh, so the Node uh, project thing. So yeah, um, Chetan has the was the person who started this whole thing, and a bunch of us uh, are over here helping uh, you know build this uh, here. So Node Goat. Um, I'm showing you the repository because I'm gonna run it and I'm gonna hack it together for a bit. 